Good morning, good morning. We have a nice floater today. SpaceX, eat your heart out. <laughs> Can they do that? Hold it steady for 90 minutes. I don't think that's on their to-do list. Good morning, good morning. Bit of a gray day today. It's okay. And it's still really quite warm. You know? I don't know. We'll, we'll see people walking by. He's got a jacket on. And when I went to the pool this morning, I wore a light little jacket, about the lightest one I have. It's just at the turn, turning of the season here. And it's funny, I know, <laughs> it wasn't this morning, it was, what's today? Today's Thursday. It must have been Monday or Tuesday, I don't know. I get to the pool, I go up in the elevator. The, the, the fitness center I go to is up on the 7th and 8th. The eighth and ninth floor of a local shopping mall, quite a big shopping mall, the Rocks Center. Eighth and ninth floor are the, the fitness center. I go up the elevator, I come out into the lobby, and the first thing I see right in front of me is a giant, big, it's about three meters tall, classic triangular shape, Christmas tree. <laughs> They've done their Christmas decorations, and this was on... Uh, it was on Tuesday, I guess, whatever. And this morning I saw it when I came down out through the mall, through the exit, out in front of it on the south facing uh, wind, they've got a giant Christmas tree. It's not Rockefeller Center giant, but it's big. Six meters, kind of easily five meters, maybe six. And you know, classic, perfect triangular shape, decorated with stuff, presents at the bottom. It's their Christmas sale. Welcome to Tokyo. <laughs> and they got the big sign Enjoy Christmas at Rocks. And it's uh, November the 10th to December the 25th. Not here at Mokanka, we don't do that, but uh, whatever. What have we got? No cone alignment this morning. What's that at the bottom? Something on the sidewalk. Oh, I can see it. It's garbage. That wasn't there when I came in a few minutes ago. I can see it from my window. It's a wrapper of something from like the 7-Eleven or something. Oh, embarrassing. We're going to broadcast garbage on the streets of Tokyo for the next 90 minutes. Sorry about that. Okay, what have we got today? I know, first thing up, the camera. We had trouble with the camera yesterday. So once the stream was over, I got some time. I did a complete swap out. We've got two video cameras, two video interface cards, cables all over the place. I swapped out, swapped out, swapped out, swapped out, swapped out, trying to find the source of the problem. I could not find it. I restarted the computer. I restarted everything in the system. I put it back together. It looks okay. Put it back together. It looks okay. So I don't know what that was the other day, you know? Anyway, I'll avoid touching the machine, but we have tried to find the weak link there, and I really cannot find it. Okay, a bunch of stuff on my desk this morning before we start. We are going to be, I'll give you the good news right away, we are now carving. We're up and running. It's pasted down, and we have started carving in the same place that I started tracing. I taped, I recorded the paste down. So we'll do that. We show, once we get started here, I'll show you the recording. I did record it. This was, uh, yes, no, it was Tuesday. It was, no, it was yesterday. Tuesday got blown out. It was yesterday afternoon in the shop. Okay, stuff, stuff. Oh, that's for show and tell. And those of you who know anything about, what's it called in the Chinese? It's called I Ching. Is that the word? I Ching? I Ching? I don't know anything about that. If you understand the, the Chinese derivation, we're going to look at some Japanese prints that are based on the thing that I seem to remember being called the I Ching, but I don't know the actual pronunciation of that thing. If somebody knows about it, good. Do some background research. Get ready for us. Oh, you know what this is? What else? Clean up. Oh, a bill. It's not a bill, actually. It's a... Uh, it's a Mitsumori. It's a, what do you call it? It's an estimate. This is in yen, not dollars. It's an estimate and uh, I will be paying this much. What's it for? What am I paying a million and 63,000 yen for? Can you read it? We should leave it on the chat for a while. It's a quote, uh, an estimate, a quotation. 
for something. Happens all at once, 188,000 yen, then the rest of it's by the square meter. What is it a quotation for? And this is Dave personally. This is not from Mokohankan. It's addressed to, uh, where's my name here? It's addressed to Dave Bull. And I will be paying this myself from my pocket. And Chickenmeister's got it. It's uh, renovations for the house in Ome, my house in Ome. And they're going to, it's not a new roof, they're going to sp spray the roof, jet wash it, power wash it, uh, scrape off the rust that's on the ridge line, clean that up, fix it, seal it. The roof itself is some uh, concrete asbestos kind of hard tiles. We're going to leave those completely alone. They're not the soft asphalt type tiles. They are hard tiles. They're all going to be jet washed, power washed, resealed. I've got the house. I've got a picture of the house somewhere. It's an old little funny house. It's now 35 years old and all the walls, the caulking has dropped out of all the walls. So that what you see is on a, it's on a, some sort of asbestos panel that's fireproof, whatever. If the house next door burns down, we don't burn down. And that all has to be scraped. The caulking has to come out. Two layers of paint go on. The gutters all have to be rebuilt. The downpipes redone and painted. And uh, put in a heater. This has nothing to do with that. This is simply the, the roof and the gutters and the outside walls. That's all that's happening. And I'll be paying a million sixty thousand for that. So it's about Actually, it's funny, look, in this case, if I were paying this in, in dollars, it's going to sound really cheap to you guys, because a million yen, what's that these days? That's like $6,000 only, so it's no big deal. And that's starting uh, next week. Uh, I've, I've, I phoned him and said, okay, go ahead with it, and uh, we can do this. And it's what it is, it's, it's Abisan. You've heard me talk about Abisan, the lady who cuts my hair. Abisan is going to do the roof and the, the house. The same Abisan. He. She, Abisan, she cuts my hair. Abisan, he, that's his business. He runs a company to, uh, to, to do house renovations and stuff. So he's doing the house, she's doing my hair, which is more expensive. Okay, paper is out. Yes, paper is out for two people. Uh, Ayumi-san is coming today. She has just finished a batch of, I think we showed it, she just finished a batch of Seba Station, and she's now working on, I can't remember, I don't know. We chatted about it, I signed her a print. I don't remember, she's working on something. And uh, Yuki-san is there. She's just finished her batch of, we saw this already last week. She just finished her batch of crane and wave, waiting on my desk for a check. And she's now starting uh, the little set of blocks at Taransa. She's starting the Travelers, the Don Quixote print. The Don Quixote print. Someone got their great wave. There you are. <laughs> so, <laughs> one takes a little off the top. Okay, all right. Fair enough. We're not replacing the roof. We're not replacing the roof. He's just going to power wash it, seal it, fix the rust on the ridge line. That's all. There's no replacement going on here. Uh, this, okay, this is more work. This has just come back from Yuki-san. Actually, already she is pr just drilling along. She did this, and it was just a few days ago. She wanted new work. Hi, hi, something else to do, please. So I fed her this one. We're getting low on stock of this one. This is from our set of subscription prints, back issue subscription prints from 20... 2014, I think. It's the portraits set one. And she's done a very, very nice job on this. She's really done a good job. They're consistent. They're nice. Recognize the game, anybody? It's not the most common game in the world, but uh, those who like it, like it. You can have done a good job of this. Then another one, another batch of prints came onto my desk last night. Day Chan. Dejan, he's been mostly working on a bunch on, on the Hokusai subscription series, but we were desperately short of this, so Dejan has come up with another batch of Dragon in Clouds. And these are waiting now to be trimmed. The Ome staff will be trimming these. The printer doesn't have to trim them. This is Hokke, not Hokusai. This is Hokke. And the pigment, the, the lettering is done in uh, bronze, bronze powder. 
she's, she's done a really good job let's look at that black rich jet black nice tone of the dragon and clean and clear metallic powder this is so difficult to do if you haven't tried this yourself this looks easy this girl has just made it look so easy if you've never tried it a jet black everywhere not a dot out of place rich jet black and clean and clear metallic pigments with no blotting and no blurring. This young lady is a treasure. This is Dei Chan. She's a partner of Chon San, who's carved most of these. I carved this one. And they are an absolute treasure for us. She is so good at this. This is number seven in our catalog. I'm sure it's online right now. And my God, they're cheap. My God, they're cheap. I don't know if we're losing our minds or what. So this stuff is now building up and we're getting behind. That stuff all has to be checked one by one by one by one by one. Pull out little bits of chili if there are any, check them off. Make sure the checkbox is checked so the printers get paid. And my stacking up on my desk here. Yeah, thanks for the link. John's got the link. Thank you very much. That dragon, actually, you say sinister. It's not. It's kind of a joke dragon. It's, it's sort of a smiley dragon face, and he doesn't really look all that sinister in the cloud. Lights, lights, lights. Yep, finally off the iPad. That's right. Here we are on the wood. Okay, we've got her ready for carving here. Shall we roll the video? Here's the block. Let me roll the video from, I think it was yesterday afternoon. I really can't even remember. I'm not sure if the video has any audio track. Let me know if I need to narrate it or if the audio is there or if the audio is not there. Let's give this a roll. Here we are yesterday, right here, same time, same station. I'm not hearing any audio, I think. Is it a silent movie? It has audio, somebody says. It is very spotty boxwood. I, know I had to think long and hard about that. That's not uh, a hole in the boxwood. It's just a different color, a different tone. I think we're okay carving across those black lines. We're struggling, we're struggling to find good wood, and this is a quote, good piece, unquote. Moisten the wood first so the glue doesn't penetrate too far. This is normal polyvinyl chloride PVC wood glue. That's a little bit too much, Dave. And as far as I can tell, there's no seams. Somebody's asking, I don't think there's any seams. I went over the whole thing quite carefully. And I can see now Dave is thinking, oh my God, too much paste, too much glue. So he's going to wipe some off in a second here. Yeah, there we go. So you, my, the voice you're hearing now is my current narration here on Thursday morning. The, the video seems to be silent. Tapping it up, although that's not really meaningful anymore. 
We use the wood glue for key block lines. We use the mucilage, the soft glue, for color blocks. Down she goes. Quick rub with the fingernails, get it touched down. No, no honey on the key blocks. And I tried to peel the paper off the back here uh, in a single pass, but I, when I did the spray glue, to put the Gumby paper onto the background. I got it a bit too tight, a bit too much glue. You can see it right there, Dave's thinking, oops. He tries to go around. I didn't want to do any peeling yet. So he's trying to avoid peeling the Gumby at this point. There, it's starting to peel right there. He's trying to avoid it. There we go, got most of it off. And then what the heck, let's do a peel. If Taranzan's watching, he's going to have his head in his hands. No, don't do this, but whatever. It's still fun. And I do like having the whole image clean and clear on the table in front of me. There she goes. Boom. Tough stuff. And look at that image. That's the result of all our tracing over the past month or so. It's of course now reversed. We traced in real orientation. This is reversed because I pasted face down and the printing paper will go face down. There's a scale, my thing finger for scale. As I said, there's a few brown streaks there. I believe it's just a color tone. It's not uh, holes in the wood or anything. There we go. Off she comes. That's yesterday afternoon. How's our time? 8.17. Let's get to work. Nice peel, nice peel. But again, to emphasize, the real traditional carvers didn't do that. They didn't do it at all. They leave it on and you rub off just the part you're going to carve and you work there. Then you use your finger, you rub off another part, you carve there. By having it all taken off, I'm, I'm leaving myself open to damage. As I'm carving this, my hand can rub another corner of the block and damage it. So Hontani, if I was sharp, smart enough, I wouldn't do that. So is it the brown lines? Whatever, I can see they are brown, the other lines are black. It's okay, I can see what's going on. Remember, I know what this image looks like now. I've, I've, uh, yeah, here you are, you can see this. The brown and the black, they're there. If, if I was sending this out to another carver and there was lots more of the brown, that carver could get confused, but I know what's going on. And remember, I've drawn every single line of this and studied it and worked over it. And what I'll also do, if I get confused at any point, I will take a printout. I didn't prepare it now, but I will get a, I could get a printout of the thing. In fact, I've got the same size. I could keep this at the side of my desk. A printout of the lines. So to refer to if the block itself was unclear. And I might do that, get an enlargement print out an enlargement and keep it by the side of the bench. So.
Oh, Talansan's here too. Good morning, Talansan. This is uh, number seven in our Hokusai series. It'll be published in January. And at the moment, Taran-san is working on the, I think it's the eighth one, the one that will be published in March. Chon-san is working on the ninth one, the one that will be published two months later. So we're all, uh, we're all busy trucking away on this thing. So we've got one guy carving here. One guy carving here. We've got Taransan watching, another carver watching. You should do a play-by-play. -play. Is Taransan here?
France and she do a play by play here. And then, <laughs> whatever. And he turns, can he get around this corner? Will he go? Oh, it looks like he got through the corner fine. Can he get the next one lined up properly? Transan should do a dramatic play by play here. So, <laughs> let's see. The thing from Taransan's point of view, of course, is it would be so cool, whatever, to have a split screen here. I'm carving on the left and he's carving on the right. And then you can see the different ways of doing this. You know, we've talked about this many, many times. I rotate the block way too much compared to a, compared to a traditional carver. Because my, my repertoire of strokes that I have available to my hand and wrist is so, is so uh, limited. The experts, the best traditional carvers of the old days, the experts, would of course rotate the block not so much at all because they had a full, uh, a full range of flexibility. They could carve top and bottom and left and right and underneath because they had practiced rotating their wrist in different directions. Taransan has been doing this way. He's been studying and training and practicing this way right from day one. I wasn't there, but he can tell us about it, I'm sure, when, when Asuka Sensei, his uh, guide, his mentor, gave him some practice stuff. It was vertical lines, horizontal lines, diagonal lines, diagonal lines, circles, squares, whatever, you name it. And Taransan was assigned to try and carve this without rotating the block. So if he were doing this job, he would be rotating the block quite a bit less than, than I do. I grew up in a, in a self-instructed environment where I carve like this under my nose. I can do a little bit of back and forth. My carve from the left, that's okay. Carve from the right, that's okay. But I didn't go in and explore how much to, to bend my wrist. So I turned the block and put it back in the same orientation. That's okay, I get the work done, it's all right. There's no big tragedy. It takes longer than it would if you didn't have to rotate the block. And my, my inherent skill level, the, the, the list of skills that I have, of course, is, is lower. And Tanan San is, you know, has been training under a more strict regime. So he, he turns the block much, uh, much less than I do. I get the sun down now. I get it down and the print looks good and the block is printable. But if an old, old, old carver was looking down on me here from a from, from hundred years ago, he would just be thinking, oh my God, oh my God. But the work gets done and the sense of the lines, can I make a good line, can I cut a nice corner? That's there. So even though I'm not uh, doing it in absolutely the classical technique, I get it done. Yes, I have depth perception. It's a stereo microscope. I have two eyes and I have two lenses and it's focused on that spot. It's a stereo microscope and it's complete depth perception. I see in real life with depth and with shadows and shading and, uh, and whatever. Someone's asking about Reborn. Are these prints going to be available? And actually there is news on this. So no, I think, I'm not sure if it's opened up or not. Stand tight on this. Next week, we're, we've got another batch of prints coming back from one of our printers soon this week. And when we can confirm that we've got the first five, first six, all in good quantity, we will be opening up Hoxai Reborn, uh, I think next week. Maybe I understand might have done it yesterday. I don't know, whatever. It might be open right now. I can't remember. We, we know we are going to open it up in this next week. I think she's maybe saving it. We'll do what we call a chimp. We do a chimp emailing announcement and uh, she will open it up. We will open it up and send the announcement out and then shut it down again because we've only got room for, I don't know, another 25 people or so. I don't know.
Any news on the tax audit? Yes, yes, yes. John says it's not really stereo. You have two eyepieces, but they're seeing the same view. I'm not going to argue optics, but if I can, whatever. Two lenses at the top, and I guess they go through mirrors into one lens, which looks down. Okay, just a second. Let me test this. If I, no, John, it's a stereo. It's stereo. When I put this knife here, it's one about one inch up from the background. When I look through with my left eye, the knife moves to a different place compared to when I look with my right eye. You know, like this. When I put my finger here, my left eye, it's over the right hand side of the computer. My right eye, it's over the left side of the computer. I'm getting the same effect in the, in the lens here. It's stereo. There's depth perception. Sorry about this, but there is. Next time you're here, sit down and give it a try. There is one lens on the bottom. Tap, tap, tap. And the two go through mirrors into one lens. But when I put my finger there and I look through from my right eye, it's there. And my left eye, it's there. It's in a different place. I don't know how it works. John is saying, Dave, whatever, whatever. Are we talking about the same thing but using different words? I don't know. To me, when you do your left eye and right eye and that finger moves, that's depth perception. If we're using the words differently, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, it works for me, whatever. <laughs> Do I fully understand these optics? Absolutely not. Can I carve here? Yes. And actually the thing itself, this Meiji scope is in their catalog. It's called a stereo microscope. And that's not my, uh, my invention, my, my uh, fabrication. But now that you think about it, stereo is usually for us, it's an audio term, right? When sound comes in one ear and the other ear at different times. We have two sources of signal coming in from one original source. I mean, the, the trumpet plays a tone. And because I have two pickups, two ears, we're able to have this thing we call stereo. We're calling this a stereo microscope. There's one source of light that, well, is there one? I don't know. The point of the knife is what we're talking about. Is that a single source or is it a multiple source? I don't know. And John's a lens guy too, photography, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever. Somebody asked about the taxes. We thought we were out of the tunnel. We had seen lots of light at the end of the tunnel over the last week and the first couple of days of this week. And we had one foot out of the tunnel. We thought we were done. And then what's today? Today's Thursday. Tuesday, we got a visit from the tax people. Two people came over, different two people. These are now more senior people. They've reviewed everything. They've done everything. They've gone over all the work prepared by the, the junior members. And we were pretty much clear, except they wanted to clarify one area. We pay royalty payments to people overseas and we haven't been deducting income tax on those, you know, the withholding 
when you pay somebody, you're supposed to keep back part, give it to the government, and they sort it out later. We weren't doing that because these people live overseas and are not subject to Japanese taxation. Well, it turns out, according to the law here, we are still supposed to withhold money because Japan and the U.S. has a, some kind of tax agreement where you don't pay double taxes and you don't overly tax each other's blah, 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 whatever. And because of that, we are supposed to withhold taxes from an American citizen when we pay them for work done. We didn't know this. So their bone of contention was, one, we should start doing this now, and two, they wanted to claim back for the past three years all the money that we should have withheld. And this is to people like Jed, who's doing design work for us, and the people have done the design work for the eight views of cats and stuff like that. And we, of course, fought back on this. And I fight. It wasn't a fight at that point. It's still not a fight, but we claim back. Come on, people. Three years of back royalties? Those, those designers are not going to give me the money back. And it went back and forth. It turned out then that they decided that if we could supply documentation that these people were American and that they weren't subject to tax in Japan, then they would not do this clawback. So we followed their instructions. They said, we want to see photocopies of passports and a telephone bill with their address and all that kind of stuff, which we supplied as fast as possible. Our overseas people replied, we supplied it. They then said, that's not enough. We need what's called a W-9 form supplied by the IRS. We go to the IRS website, figure out what a W-9 form is, ask our designers to comply, and they all complied. Bunch of extra paperwork. The lady came over on Tuesday morning, talked about this, and said, there's no official stamp on these W-9 forms from the IRS. I said, no, that's not how a W-9 works. Look, and I printed one out for her from the IRS website, and the IRS instructions to the designer is, fill this out and send it to your requester, the person who's paying you the money. Do not send this form to the IRS. I pointed this out to her. She says, hmm, no problem. Went back to her ranch. She phones the next morning, Wednesday morning, and says, you're right, that was the wrong form. I need a form that has the IRS stamp on it. So this is now the third thing they've asked us for. And the one they're asking for is, I think it's an 8022. Mm -hmm. We have to go to the IRS website, make an application on an 8022, and they send us a 1166. I forget the numbers, whatever, whatever, whatever. And she says, do this. And we say, okay. She says, I need this within a couple of weeks to be able to wrap this all up. If you can get this to me within a couple of weeks from each of your designers, we're good to go, and you're in the clear, and we're out of this. Looking good. We go to the IRS website. Barrier number one, to do this application is $185. So each of our designers has to pay $185 to do the application. Barrier number two, this has to be redone every year. It's not a form that's good forever. It's a new form each year. So for each of our designers, they have to go to the IRS, pay this money and get this form every calendar year. Barrier number three, the IRS doesn't do it back up one year, two years, three years previous. They don't do that. So this three-year period that she wants to claw back from me, we can't get documentation for. Barrier number four, it gets worse, it gets worse. She said she wants to wrap this up in a couple of weeks and let me go. The IRS website has a place about the 8802, 8802, blah, 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 click, click, click. There's a button there that says, if you are encountering delays. I click the button, it says, it's current status of the 8802 applications. We are currently processing applications. Uh, we are currently processing documents for which the applications came in 10 months ago at the end of 2022. <laughs> Once your application begins processing, please expect 45 days as a minimum processing time. And she wants this thing in a couple of weeks, and there's no, there's no power on this planet that can get this thing within four weeks. They're now working on stuff that was applied for back at the beginning of 2020. 
So we discovered this yesterday afternoon with all our research. So this morning, I have to phone her. After the stream's over, I got to get upstairs on my phone and phone this lady and say, I got some good news and I got some bad news. And she's just whatever. She's just gone through her manuals to do this. You need form number such to do this. We need form number such and such. In real life, it's a different story. So I have no idea what she's going to do. She, she's going to ask me to pay this three years of back back taxes, back withholding taxes, or she's going to waive it, or she's going to want this going forward, or I have to apply now for 2025. I have no idea what's going to happen. This tax rep, don't, she doesn't speak English, of course, nothing. This is all happening in Japanese, absolutely all happening in Japanese. And we were, we had one foot out of the tunnel until, until this lady came and I put my foot in it. The W-9 form, the one that, that she asked for that doesn't have the IRS certification, that's what she'd asked for. We'd sent them all through. So she said it doesn't have the IRS stamp. And I said, well, it's on, I should have said it's on there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Instead of waking up this dragon. <laughs> I did nothing wrong, but my God, it, it's starting to get a little bit. A little bit, whatever. None of this is happening in any uh, in any environment of hostility whatsoever. We're chatting whether we're talking about it. We're looking at the IRS website, going through these things. She doesn't obviously clearly. She's never done this before. And this was a bit of a surprise to me. If we were dealing with some tax office out in the boonies, out in Omi where I lived or something, I would get it. They wouldn't have seen this before. But we're dealing with a Tokyo Asakusa Taitoku branch office, one of like five major tax offices here in central Tokyo. And these guys don't know anything about this? Anyway, that's where it sits. So there is a small chance that we will be asked to pay this penalty for three years back. It's not a penalty. We will ask to be to pay what was withholdings. And it's like, I think it's about $30,000 all in total. We may be asked to pay this. I really don't think that's what's going to happen because she's not, uh, this woman is not in any way hostile or uh, in the feeling that we've been trying to evade things. So she, she, and she has the power just to say, okay, no, forget that. Let's just move forward and keep, do it from going on. So she has the power to let us go or to hook us tight and reel us in. She can play it either way. And there's been no fighting, no hostility. And she's a little bit on her back foot because she clearly doesn't understand this stuff. So we'll see how it goes. But it's already had ramifications. I got an email from one of our designers in America today. And even, you know, after I told him about this form, the 8022, in order to move forward, we need this. And he said, in polite language, he said, blow it out, your whatever. So he doesn't want to give his, uh, jet, his American tax number to me for passing it on to the Japanese tax authorities. So he's made this decision not to prepare this form, and then I will, and it won't even be my decision, I will then be forced by Japanese law to deduct 20.42% from all of his royalties, send it in to the Japanese government, send him a piece of paper telling him what I've done, and he then, if he wants to try and get that money back, he can apply through his tax return next spring when he does it with the IRS. And maybe he can get a tax refund. Maybe. And I heard pigs are flying, I don't know. We got fun. Mm -hmm. 
No, Jed isn't going to have to file taxes in Japan. Jed files his taxes normally. We do the withholding, pay the money to the Japanese government, send Jed the documentation. When he does his taxes next spring, he adds this documentation showing, see, I have paid taxes already in your partner country. And that goes on his tax return. And the taxes that I withheld from him and sent to the Japanese government, the IRS says, check, okay, we got it. You don't need to pay that twice. There may even be a refund. I don't know. I don't know anything about his tax situation, how many kids he's got, how many deductions he's got. We don't know. This is an estimated withholding. He may be asked over there to pay more because not enough was withheld or he'll get a refund because too much was withheld. So it's actually, it works. The system does work, but applying for documentation, which you have to pay 185 bucks for every year in order to do this, I don't know. <coughs> Japan and America, the tax systems are tied together. You never get double taxed as long as you do the paperwork properly. And someone's saying, is this the first time? The lady who was dealing with us, it's absolutely the first time for her because she did not understand. She didn't know what forms to use. She didn't know how it should be prepared. And this was a senior lady, the, the two young people who did our audit. This is a lady who is above them. We've been passed upstairs. I don't know how far upstairs we've been passed because she didn't understand the ramifications of this stuff. And I've been in this situation before. We've, we've mentioned this years ago when I had my first tax audit here. And this was 15 or nearly 20 years ago. Before we started the Mokohankan business, I was working as a sole proprietor, selling prints that I had made. And it was simple bookkeeping. I declared my income, deducted my expenses, and paid taxes on the leftover. And I was lightly audited once. They sent uh, an information thing over. Please get ready next Thursday or whatever it was. Get your uh, paperwork ready for us for the years at 2001 and 2002 or something and have the documents ready. We'll be there Thursday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon or something. My accountant came over. I came over. I was there. They came over. And we had a, an audit. And they were interested really in just two things. Checking my bank accounts to see that all the money that had come into my bank account was actually declared on my taxes. And it was. I, I don't fool around with this stuff. I declared every yen that I got. But as I said, we've mentioned this before. They said, show me your sources of income. And as part of that was PayPal, because people were buying prints from my website, paying by PayPal. And one of the two people said, P -p -pay PayPal, what's that? And they hadn't known or heard about such a place. So that was the end of the audit that day. And it was the beginning of a training session. I trained them in how this all worked, the foreign currency system, how people paid me overseas into PayPal, how it came back into my Japanese bank. They had never seen this before. This was, I don't know, 2003 or four, or something like that. So that was my first audit. And this is the second one. And we're a much bigger scale now. We're a real company and we're doing major levels of business. And this was an actual real audit shirt sleeves up, rolled over calculators on the table, etc., etc. And as I said, we've passed. We we're not hiding anything. We passed the audit part of it. And now we're just trying to get around this question of withholding taxes on royalty payments. We had, it's still up there, we have a small bottle of champagne on the shelf in my room. And we nearly cracked it open Tuesday afternoon thinking that we were in the clear. And for some reason we didn't. I guess it's not everybody was here. We thought, let's hold back a bit. So we didn't. And then Wednesday morning she drops this on us. So, so it's a good thing we held back on the bubbly. Just a little bottle. It's a tiny little bottle. The smallest bottle of champagne you can buy. We were just going to pop it and say congratulations to ourselves. The bottle is still on the shelf. PayPal, it's nothing. Sorry I brought it up. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> 
no, no, we had to show how it works, you know. The thing, though, after I showed them that day, I mean, really, they didn't know about international payment, you know. What's, what's PayPal? PayPal's not a bank. PayPal is, what do they call it? A money forwarding service? I forget the name of what it is. And they hadn't known about such things. So I, I showed them what's gone and how it works, and we logged into PayPal while they were watching, and we downloaded a CSV of the activity, and they checked it against my numbers and blah, blah, blah. But I was after they had left and it was all over, I'm thinking, geez, I wonder if there's any other foreigners living in their same tax district who have been, you know, making bacon on PayPal and not telling the tax office. And now the tax office is going to go to those people and say, hey, uh, let me see your PayPal login. <laughs> I don't know. Have I screwed it up for somebody else? I don't know. Whatever. All I can do is answer the questions. But the time and energy we spend on this stuff, you know, we should have been making prints. And I've spent so many hours on those things, you know. I know we have to do bookkeeping. I myself, I like that. I like having a good tight set of books. It helps me run my business. I enjoy the bookkeeping part of it. What I don't like, of course, and I, and I don't mind paying taxes. Of course, we understand we got to do this. So I like bookkeeping. Taxes are whatever they are. The problem is the futzing around and the dotting the I's and just make a simple tax code and get out of our way. Let your computers patrol the data, look for anomalies, investigate the anomalies. If anybody's cheating, it's going to show up statistically. And for the rest of us, just leave us alone. Get out of the way and let us make prints. I'm not a libertarian, nothing like that. I really believe that we need to get in this together and pay taxes and have a good infrastructure, and blah, blah, blah. But Jesus, keep out of my way while you're doing this. Okay, I think we have our hibachi. Our hibachi is done. And again, something else. Taran-san was watching here earlier. He may still be here. There's something else I'm doing quite differently from the way the quote old guys did it and from the way that Taran-san and Asuka Sensei, his teacher, are doing it. I'm coming at this zone by zone. You saw me cut the outlines for this and clear the little bits inside, then cut another outline and clear a little bit. That's not the traditional approach. The traditional approach first is one tool only, only the knife. You would never touch your clearing chisels during the course of cutting the block. You cut the entire block with your knife, cutting the lines. You don't clear out these spaces. You just cut the lines. Boom, 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 all over the whole thing. Again, it's that not to waste time. Dave put this down, picked this up, rotated the block, dug in here, pop, 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 rotated it around, pop, 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 put it down, picked up another knife, tried to figure out where we are. It wastes too much time. The old guys used one tool first, the whole block. Then they go to their big chisels, bang, clear off everything. Then they go to their intermediate chisels, do it. They were all about efficiency, absolutely all about efficiency. And Taran-san is, in, in general, he is working to that standard rather than my round and round and round standard. I'm still beating him in terms of getting work done and, and speed because I do 40 years of experience really, really does count. Taran-san is being still quite a bit more careful with this and, you know, stepping carefully on this. But if he does go through, you know, his, his, his training, keeping to this uh, ethic and keeping to the way that Asuka-san has showed him, and if he has good, he's still here, whatever, if he has good DNA on this, he has the potential to be a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous carver. It'll all come out in the wash as time goes by. He's on the right track, the stable, steady, do it properly track, which I was never on. Okay, how's our time? 8.54. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What else do we have done? We have uh, today's show and tells coming up at 9.15 are going to be a little bit small, scrappy show and tells. No, no socks off dramatic stuff today. Some quiet, small little prints, which we'll look at at about 9.15. Oh, also too, now that I, I mentioned it, now that I remember, didn't remember, I got my little memo. There is 
an event coming up that may be of interest to those of you who live in the Vancouver area, Vancouver, Canada, not Vancouver, Portland, Vancouver, Canada. If you're in BC, Vancouver, my daughter has become a part owner of a daycare center in Vancouver. The daycare center that she was sending my eldest granddaughter to was closing down this last summer and just at the time when my granddaughter was graduating from it, so no problem. But I also have a grandson, and my daughter Humi wants the grandson to go to the same daycare center. It's a bicultural daycare center, Japanese English, Japanese English. But they were closing down. The lady had been running it for decades and she was retiring. So my daughter, together with a bunch of the other mothers, said, we can handle this, and they bought the business from her. They have become the owners of a daycare. Licensing, 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 licensing. She's wrestling with all stuff. She and the other mothers are wrestling with this. And they've, they've set it up as thing like, my daughter's in there for three or four years when her kid, my son, grandson graduates, another mother will buy in and buy out and buy in and buy out. So it's kind of a mother's co-op daycare. Whatever, they've got this thing up, it's running, it's in there. Anyway, they're doing fundraising. So she asked me, Dad, can you send over some blocks? print party blocks. So I've done this. I've sent to my daughter a full set of blocks for one of our print parties. And they're having an event. I don't know what day it is yet. She will let me know and I will let you know. And if you're over there in Vancouver, and this will be somewhere around Christmas or something like that, they've got, they've got a, a, an event, a fundraiser for their daycare, and they're going to have activity one, activity two, activity three. And one of the activities is going to be a Mokohankan print party taught by my daughter. <laughs> so, whatever. And they're going to charge you, tell me, five bucks, ten bucks, I don't know, whatever, donation or something like this. I have no idea what it is. So, no, no, I'm not going to ask you to buy cookies, whatever. It's just, I'm just telling you, if you live in Vancouver or nearby and you want to do a print party hosted by my daughter, I'll let you know when it's all going on. And then, whatever, so I've sent her the package and the goods and they're all getting there. She's, she's done this a million times. She knows how to do this and she'll be able to run it. Do they have a website? I don't think so. I don't think so. This is just, it's a private little daycare. I'm not a private, it's, it's a little daycare school. <clears throat> but once the fundraiser gets up and running, I'll let you know what it's about. And I'm not asking for donations. I'm just saying, if you're living in Vancouver and you want to have fun with this, I'll give you the time and date and it'll be at the daycare center up in the hall on the second floor and it'll be Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, and you go and pay your two bucks or whatever it is and, and make a print party print those in Vancouver. But then the idea came up. One more idea here, just to put a flea in, in your ear here. I'm, I will probably be going to visit my family next February. February is the slowest part of the year for us here. I was supposed to go in August, another slow time. Didn't happen. So I'll be going in February. So she says, hmm, hmm. So we'll see. Maybe in February, we can repeat this thing. Maybe Dave goes over and if people want to say hello and drop in or whatever, maybe. I mean, I'm not going to charge people to sit and chat with people who want to see Dave, but if they've got an official fundraiser coming in and I can help do a print party, I think I've, I can be on board with that. So we'll see. I'll keep you in touch with what's happening. And the blocks I sent her, I didn't send her the microwave blocks at all because my daughter is okay at this. She's done it many, many times when she was younger. But to do the microwave as a print party, there's two gradations on there. And for someone who is not really experienced in hosting a print party, and the helpers are going to be completely useless, having a block with two gradations is not the best idea. So I didn't, uh, I didn't send the microwave blocks. I sent the blocks for... Uh, Hanasaka Jichan. It's an oval shaped print with cherry blossoms all over the place and the guy with the ash, you know, his dog has died and cremated it and the ash is blossoming into cherry blossoms. It's a dark story, but the print is fine. Oh, two gradations. Didn't we do a gradation on the sky? I'm trying to remember how this went. 
Didn't we do a gradation? We did. We did a gradation on the gray sky. I don't remember. You know, at this point, I don't remember. This must be Ayosan. Yeah, you got the garbage. Sorry, I was going to pick it up here. There's a garbage can right here, Ayosan. Over here. Right, right to the car. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Oh, no, when I came in, it wasn't there. And when we turned the stream on, the garbage was there. So like, or, or, or it blew down. Is it windy today? I don't know. So, Ayunasan has done my job. She's picked up the garbage. At least it's just onigiri no. Is it? So, yeah, uh, no, a rice ball wrapper. I thought it looked like com kombini food. So, 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 so. Yeah, but it's funny. When I came in, it wasn't there. But we put the camera up and bang, right in front of the camera. <laughs> it's garbage. Oh, somebody could have just tossed it. I didn't see. Good morning, oh, good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Ayana-san is back. Here, here, here. I walked from Uena Station today. It was a nice walk. Oh! Like 20... So you're a different train nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. But, uh, so, yeah, I changed trains to Uena Station. You mean, you mean Ginza Line Station or Yamanote Line? Well, Uena Tokyo Line. Sorry, neither. No, but it, neither. Okay, okay, but, but JR. Not, JR. not, not uh, JR. Okay, 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 okay. JR. And it's just a 20, like, It is. Walk. Have you got, okay, I've got some hints about this. A couple of neat places in the back streets. After, this, after let me show you. Ah, uh, hi, hi. There's some, there's right near Weno Station, there's a really cool place where the, the Metro Line, the Gin, the, not the Metro Line, the, the Ginza Line, the, the Ginza Line garage is hidden away behind Weno Station. Hey. Maybe you know about this already. And there's a place where the Ginza Line comes up into the, into the garage. It's where they feed all the trains in and out of the Ginza Line. And there's a little ding, 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 ding. You stand there on the sidewalk and the gates come down. Ding, 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 ding. And the trains come by on the street. Hey. And it's one of the only places in Tokyo where you can see a subway line, a subway train running along an actual street. Whatever, she's maybe not impressed. But Dave just stands, well, every time he walks over there, Dave just stands there. Look at these trains. It's a subway, you know, a, an orange subway line running along the street. And it goes into the garage, and then it comes out of the garage, and it goes down the hole. And you can see it going down, 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 down into the black hole. It disappears. <laughs> she says, <laughs> she's not really impressed, but it's okay. <laughs> but no, but the Ginza line, like, going... Because I, I, I used to take Ginza line every day. I, used, I still mm. take uh, Ginza mm -hmm. line, but uh, I don't remember when it goes... Oh, like well, no, you know, you, no, no, no passengers are on. Uh, no passengers. It's done. Okay. No, it always, it always stops at Ueno Station. The last train when they're going for the garage, you don't get on a train that says garage. The train says Ueno Yuki, Hi. and you have to get off. And all the people get off at Ueno Station, right. and then it goes, cut chup, 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 goes in the back corner and out uh, into the garage. So, so no, 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 you can't okay. ride the train on the street. But uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I was but, wondering some train stop at Ueno Station that needed to get off the yeah, train. Yeah, then that's like, it because it's heading. No, it's heading for the garage. So I'm sorry, if I, if I misspoke, I'm sorry. You can't ride it up on the ground after they've dumped the passengers. Up it comes into the garage, into the garage. No, 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 I'm sorry if I mis misspoke here. So they're all excited. Where can I do this? Where can I do this? You <laughs> but there's also, there's also, to get from here to Wayno, there's some, uh, we, we can't just talk like this. But, uh, let me let me get a map and show you. This, no, it's a, the cool. street is very nice, like a quiet, but still mm -hmm. like active. Like mm -hmm. some shops mm -hmm. are already open and they're preparing. Did you like discover the old elementary school that you can't see the building because of the ivy? There's an elementary school there. It's now kids can't go inside anymore. It's okay. abandoned, and you can no longer see the building. The entire thing. It looks like some some. What's that artist's name? Cristo. He covered buildings with wrapping. There's a school there that's entirely covered with ivy, and they're trying to decide what to do with it. Um, whatever, whatever. Anyway, that area is a really, really, really cool area. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk too much. I'm really sorry. I really enjoyed the morning walk. It was really mm. nice. Yeah, yeah. So if it's a nice day, maybe I should walk from mm. Winter Station. Mm. No, it's a good one. It's a good area. Yeah. So, yeah. So. <sighs> okay. That's yes. it. I know what's happening. The the book works and we're we're caught up on work and stuff, right? I know our planning. You and me have got to plan that thing for next week, the mailing, what to do, and uh, so, so so so. And people were asking today, and I didn't know. Hokusai Reborn is it open at the moment? I think it's still closed. It's still closed, yeah, but it's yeah. coming open. Yes, next. yes. I think we should make sure that our printers are mm. able to mm. catch up with We've the got one, two, three, four, five to show. Whatever. Anyway, so, like I said, we, we, we have to make sure we're good on the... And how many, maybe two dozen, three dozen? 
Two we can't. Dozen. Two dozen. So maybe it'll be open next week for about two dozen more people. I'm sorry to tease. This is just simply, simply what it is. So, so, so. Still waiting for uh, you know British Museum uploading the video. This. Get yeah, I'm yeah. checking every morning. I check the British Museum. You know, I, I tease the people here. British Museum told us <laughs> they're uploading a video <laughs> about like this. This was like two or three weeks ago. <laughs> I check every morning. Every morning. Every morning. Check <laughs> you YouTube British Museum website. Video coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also too. Thank you, thank you. The pictures. She took some pictures out in ah, Ome last week. You got the discount. I wasn't really aware of what's going on. I just went in my room and sat there for a minute, whatever. And yeah. uh, it turns out there was a skulker taking pictures. <laughs> I was sitting there <laughs> sniffling and so try, <laughs> trying not to start crying or something. <laughs> I guess it's okay. Yeah. Are there lots of comments I didn't see? Are there? Yeah, like nine. Yeah, really? 19 comments, yeah. You should read through. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Ah, Nanda, Nanda, Nanda. So, the and Instagram uh, post yesterday, I understand. 1,100 so. likes, I guess. 1,100? What? Uh, 11. Okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever, sorry, whatever, sorry, whatever. Sorry. okay, okay, whatever. Okay, 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 whatever. Okay. Hi. So that was good, thanks. Hi, thanks. Hi. Thanks. 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 Right. Okay, okay. And today I've got to, there's check, I've got to get some of this stuff checked. People are dumping, uh, people are asking today, the dragon print, is it available? Take what's hands it, is the dragon available? So today uh, I've got to do checking. Okay, okay. And what's today? Today's Thursday. Is anybody in Ome tomorrow for this? When am I shipping to Ome? Okay. So these things I should check today and ship to Ome to arrive tomorrow. Tomorrow. Is that okay? Let me double check. Later. All right, okay, okay. Yeah. And then the next, oh there's God. four, there's four oh prints, God. one, two, three, there's four waiting. Okay, okay, okay. Just the last couple of days I, I tried to keep on this instead. And uh, so. if the prints arrives from uh, Chihari's... I know, yeah, we're all, yeah, Teiko san yeah. asked me, so, so, oh so, rickshaw carts. The minute, it, added, yep, yeah. the minute it comes in, I will clear my desk, I will check them, get them ready, and it's FedEx, right? So this, so this, so Okay, this. we'll do. Okay, ja. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. There was something else I was supposed to ask you. It, it's forgotten. I'll remember it. Whatever. I'll remember it as soon as I can. Yep, okay. Thanks, San San. All right, see you soon. There was something else about work I was supposed to ask you, but I, I can't remember. So. That particular area, just east of Bueno Station, it really is fun, I know, walking on back streets and stuff. And there's one sort of a list, a sort of a hidden thing. The street that we're on here, the street we're looking at right here, over the years it's, it's been sort of extended and changed. And it turns out this street that we're on, if you came out of our shop and turned right, it goes all the way straight tut, 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 and it ends at the Sumida River. Partway along it becomes Dempu Indori, quite a famous street, and towards it loses that name, then it gets to the river. But there's a new way now to get across the river. A few years ago, the railroad bridge there, which had no pedestrian access, they hung a pedestrian uh, walkway along the railroad bridge. So if you come out of our building, turn right, walk along this street, geeking, geeking out at everything, get to the river, you then walk across the railroad bridge on the pedestrian walkway, it goes through Sumida Park, and it goes right along the walkway to the Sky Tree. And it then continues along the river, there's a little river and a walkway there, going past the sky tree all the way to, I forget what the name of a park is, and there's a long S-shaped park, which is about five or six kilometers long, and takes you to the Arakawa River. And that's connected all when you walk out of my shop and turn right. Then when you turn left, if you walk out of the shop and turn left, you walk along the road, past the district she's talking about, near Bueno Station, past that subway, garage, whatever, and you get to what looks like a solid wall. It's the Yamanote, you know, we're, we're in Shitamachi, the low territory, and that's Yamanote, the high territory. And it looks like it's the end of your walk, but no, there's a pathway. When you come out of our street, turn left, go all the way till you bump into this, that's Bueno Park, turn right, and there's a little hidden alley that goes up, and it's the pathway, and you end up right in front of Tokyo National Museum. The same street that we're on here, just doodling along, it ends up right in front of Tokyo National Museum, the fountains there. You keep going, it winds through Geidai University, the Tokyo University of the Arts, and then goes up into the Yanaka Cemetery. And this walk from the Yanaka Cemetery, if you're up for it, all the way to the Arakawa River, or stop at the Sky Tree, whatever, could be a dynamite, dynamite attraction. It's fabulous. 
whichever day of the week you're on, it changes their shops open just on Sunday, not on other shops. It's really, really, really one of Tokyo's, I think, to me, really, really hidden little interesting things to do. Anyway, 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 what's the time? 9.10. Let's do a couple more strokes of token work and then get to our show and tell. <coughs> I got some tape on my thumb here. It's nothing to do with the work here. Last night I was doing something upstairs in my room with a cutter knife and I, I tapped my thumb with a cutter knife. Nothing to do with the carving work here. So. I don't have band-aids. Actually this must be gone by now. It's finished by now. world-famous carver comes in front of the camera with a with a band-aid on his finger <laughs> so <coughs> sorry
Judging by the sound of things, that's the Oshibori truck outside, is it? The, the cold hot towels. Okay, that's a good start. We've got a good start on this now. How long is it going to take us? Well, this has to be finished. The print will be shipped in the first week of January. Printing shouldn't be too bad. There will be three, maybe four color blocks altogether. This is our start. Coming along well. There we go. That'll be my work now for the next month of streams. Easily, this is all that you're going to see. There'll be nothing else here on the stream. There'll be no more tracing. There might be the occasional embossing or something, whatever. Okay, let's have some show and tell. It's small scale stuff this morning, show and tell. As I said, there's no dramatic uh, socks off today. We've got a couple of small packages. I'm not sure how many we'll get through. There's two or three packages that I haven't opened. They've been waiting for a while. In fact, one of them, the first one here, actually, I did have to open. Because you know the way that Yahoo Auction works. When you bid on something, uh, when you, you win it, you make your payment. You're the one that has to pay. And then they send the goods. And once they've sent the goods, you have to click the button that says, I've checked it and I've received it. And if you don't get anything, if you don't do this, the other guy doesn't get paid if the amount is over a certain level. Uh, so this one, this came in a couple of weeks ago, and I had to open it. And I, I was going to save it for the stream to open, but uh, the request came from Yahoo. Please pay, please click the button, or the guy won't get paid. So I had to, uh, I had to open it and receive it. And what we've got is fun. I'm not sure if it's a whole set or if it's half a set. Do you recognize what we're looking at? These are prints in the Senshafuda. Well, John's talking about some of the scammers pumping up the prices. I didn't want to talk about it today. Maybe we'll cover it in the next stream. There is an update on the story. I got scammed on a couple of auctions last week, and I've had communications back and forth with the person putting up the auction. It's not something I can get into right now with only a few minutes left of our stream, but there is a story coming and there is information coming. What happens when you talk to the scammer directly? Anyway, whatever. Let's let's deal with that later. So we're looking at a Senshafida print, but with a bit of a difference. The Senshafida size is the overall size you see here. It's about six by whatever it is, 17 or something. This one is done in a four-up pattern. There's actually four smaller it's cut as though it was four smaller ones, and one of them has been doubled with an image over top of it. It's a format that was used sometime. These prints date from, there's no date on the actual prints, but as far as I can see, the, the style and mood and feeling, this is Taisho. And if I was going to put a number, I'd say Taisho 10. Taisho 10 is where I would plop my finger down on the page. And what's the theme here? What's the theme? The theme is these six bars, and I gave it away. I told you about it back at the beginning of the stream. I don't know the pronunciation. I don't know much about this myself inherently. This is the Chinese fortune-telling device. I think it's known as I Ching, I space C-H-I-N-G. I Ching, I Ching, I don't know. All I know is that it exists. It involves getting some sticks, some of which are marked a certain way, and it turns out you have a long stick and a stick with a, a break in the middle. And it turns out when you have six of them like this, if you do the math, there are 64 patterns available. 
and it's all broken up into groups and there's meaning of this and meaning of that and it's been going on for thousands of years. I don't believe in any of this stuff, of course, divination and astrology and whatever, but it's a thing in culture and it came through into Japan as well. And somebody back in the Taisho period, a group of people who commissioned Senshafta prints, somebody had the idea, let's make a set related to this series of 64 uh, divination symbols. There are 32 in this group we have here. Maybe that's all they had the money for, or maybe I've only got half the set. I don't know. And I just got these the, the other day. I haven't had a chance to really study them and look at them. And obviously what they've done is they've taken the symbol, they've gone to a, a divination manual, whatever, looked up the meaning of it, and they've prepared some kind of poem or phrase and a picture related to what happens or what that specific means. Here we are, wiki list of hexagrams of the I Ching. That's the page. I already have a link prepared for that same one. Yi Du Chao has beat me to it. You've got them all there. There's 64 of these things and they're all matched. This is water, fire, something I don't know. This is land, heaven, something. Chi Ten Toi. I can't read all of them at all. And the large characters here, these are the sponsors' names, the people of, in the group who organized and sponsored the whole thing. But the carving and printing is so nice, so nice. These are to die for in quality. These are little casual woodblock prints, but look how nicely they're made. We've talked about this kind of stuff before, you know. Every little dot, every little stroke is alive. They've gone over the top with doing this. There's so much pleasure involved in these things. The size, you know, there's my th finger for size, my, my dirty fingernail, sorry. And look, the little hook stroke that goes under the bird's eye. It's got a thin thing, it thickens out. It, just every stroke looks like a real beautiful, gorgeous brush stroke, no matter how small. And I still, after 40 odd years of doing this, I still cannot get enough of this. Ken san, good morning, hello, hello, hello. hello. Just, they're treasures, they're tiny little treasures. I can't tell you the story about each, each particular meaning of everything in the I Ching. This is, what is this? Sawazanlon. I can't, I don't even know anything about it, but all I care about is look at the taste and delicacy that they've done for these prints. And again, the scale, the scale, the scale. Uh, uh, nobody else bid against me on Yahoo Auction on this. They were combined together with another set of Senshafta, which we'll show you later. In fact, those are going to go in the shop. These are from my collection. It cost me 5,000 yen for this group of 32 prints. There's a backstory here which I do not know. This to me looks like it might be related to something, children's toys, or maybe there's a manzai theme, a guy. A little toy made of bamboo? I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know what this is. At some point, we will get these photographed, put them up on the website, and we'll try and learn more about the imagery. We know what this is. Somebody's getting a treatment. Moxibushin, Moxibushin. Wind, fire, house person. We were trying to reproduce these now. You know, what it would cost, I have no idea. So many blocks, so much careful printing. 
the calligraphy carving. Some of them have the image at the top. And the registration, you know, it's pinpoint, just absolutely pinpoint. <laughs> Simple, clean. She doesn't have eyeballs, should I complain? They didn't open her eyes. <laughs> At what level do I start complaining? Nope, they opened her mouth and they gave her individual hairs, but they didn't dare open her eyes, not at this scale. <laughs> Was it an apprentice who did that one? I think they're just being reasonable. The thing though, you know, when you get a set of prints like this, because there's such a batch of them, like if we just had this one print, I could enjoy it, sit there, look at it, the nice way that they've done the, the three different levels of pink on here, and the registration pinpoint. But because there's, there's so many prints in the batch, we just go flip, flip, flip. There's enough pleasure and beauty in here for a book. Someone says they look brand new. They really do look brand new. And this is the thing about Japanese prints. Obviously, for one, these things have been in a folder, bang. They've been in an envelope, wrapped up, and they have basically never been exposed to the air. Now, oxygen is going to get in there because this is not sealed in some nitrogen atmosphere or something. But there's been no air flow. They've been in an envelope, tightly with some other stuff, in a drawer. And maybe once every couple of decades, somebody peeked, wow, this is cool, and put them away again. So they've never been exposed to airflow. And paper tones, the, the, the molecules in a paper will tone by exposure to oxygen. When paper gets brown and toning, it's, you know, that like the scientists tell us, it's actually burning, the chemists tell us. And this paper is still bright white because it's been stuck away untouched. I'm bringing it out now and looking at it, so actually we're helping it die because oxygen is now touching all these molecules. But again, once I'm done showing you there, I'll wrap it up, put it away. It'll go in a folder. It'll be, we're going to photograph it and put it on the web. And then it'll be tucked away out of sight. And this Japanese paper is such beautiful, hardworking stuff. It will last for hundreds of years. This is easily 100 years old. And it, would, it doesn't look any older than a day old. It looks like it could have been made yesterday. You're just going to have to take my word for it. This is that old. Someone says, am I the dude you always see at Design Festa? Well, I haven't been to Design Festa now for 10 years. You would have seen me there. I think I went three years in a row back in 2010 and 11 and 12. Maybe I don't remember the years I went there. But I haven't done Design Festa now in... We have our own shop, so we don't, uh, we don't need that kind of exposure. So it's either you remember a long time ago, or it wasn't me that you're remembering. But anyway, hello. I guess I should have had the page ready, and I could match up each one of those with the information page telling you what's going on, but uh, it doesn't much matter. So much pleasure wrapped up in this. Have we seen that one already? No, just different birds. Why the cherry blossoms? No idea.
So there you have it, great. Then maybe that's all there is, 32. If there had been like 30 or, or 40, I would have assumed it was a broken set. But because there's 32, my guess is that's probably all they made. Maybe if the project was successful, they might have made another 32 to produce the full set of 64 divination symbols. I don't know. So much fun. Remember how these were done back in the old days too. A group of people, it's a hobby group. They get together once a month for a drink and dinner and whatever. Think up projects. They each put money in. The members of the group, there might have been, I'm guessing, maybe 200 people. Could be 300, somewhere around there. They would decide and chat, come up with a theme. Put some money on the table, each person. The money would go to a, a printmaking workshop, which would get a designer and they'd carve and print up the 300 sets, send them back to the group. And the group would pass them out among their members. They would also maybe keep some for exchange with other groups. They're called Sen Shafda. And the group would have been maybe called, known as something like a Sen Shafda Ai Kokai, people who love Sen Shafda, or a mania group, something like this. This is the pre-war period, 1910s to 20s into the 30s. The war kind of killed it. It staggered back after the war, and this sort of thing was done post-war, but the quality level was nowhere, nowhere near what it was in the pre-war period. There were thousands of these sorts of things made. We now have a really, really, really good collection. If you want to see some in close up, go to our mokohankan.com slash blah, 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 blah. mokohankan.com slash collection and look in the search box and look for the genre. And if you look under, <coughs> excuse me, Senshafda or match labels, you will see many, many, many prints in beautiful high resolution photography. The bot's got it. Thank you very much. Look for the genre of match labels and Senshafda. Okay, that will do it. It's Thursday. Next stream here will be Saturday, November the 11th. And I'll be carving. There's no doubt about what's going on here. For the next few weeks, I will be carving, carving, carving. Thanks very much. See you in a couple of days. Let's have a peek for a few minutes outside. She was masked. There's still maybe 50-50 masked out there, Ken-san. What do you think? Uh, a little less. A little less, maybe. 40, 60, who knows? This guy has no mask. And at the moment, it's still, some people have jackets, some people just have shirts. And it looks like blue sky coming. I guess that's a taxi stopping at the hotel. Who knows? Okay, gang, I gotta get out of here, get some work done. Thank you very much. See you in a couple more days, Saturday morning. Bye for now. Three, two, one.